Forge Hammer is to kind of get rid of the old traditional way where you do everything by hand and you have something that can do the smashing into a very fast process. It speeds it up tenfold. When we were doing stuff by hand to flatten down like some of the hex stock we were working with, it would take us a couple hours. This takes about 15 minutes. We would kind of come up with stuff as we got it. Um, Professor Austin was real helpful, you know, kind of opening up the materials room to us and saying, you know, whatever you need. I think our first goal, kind of why we started this whole project, was uh, kind of David's inspiration to make Damascus steel. I kind of jumped in on that. We found out that doing it with the hammer and anvil just wasn't going to work for us. So once we get one thing mastered, the opportunities are endless. These auto hammers are used a whole lot in punching and uh, kind of metal forming industry as well, not just kind of that typical hammer, but you can make a lot of different shapes. Like I did most of the welding. David and who helped a ton on kind of building the whole thing. David was awesome at getting materials. Who was kind of our grasshopper along the way. We were teaching him how to do a lot of stuff. He did a lot of the welding, um, a lot of the machining. It was definitely a lot more complicated than we thought it would be when we started out. Auto hammer can be used for forge welding, auto fabrication, any type of metal fabrication, not just hot working, but you can also do cold working. Honestly, you can use it to work with any types of steel, but like the way we're trying to do it is we're working with high carbon steels and like certain specialty tool steels. It's a little bit different because it's using L6 and O1 steel, which are two types of tool steels that are both high carbon. It's just that the L6 has a high chance of forming bainite on the top layer, so it'll make kind of a better sword, knife, object. What you see here is definitely, we're on probably a version of seven or eight now, just as we slowly change things. Just, just slowly mod had modifications and taking away modifications. Just, yeah. Just seeing what works and what doesn't. We'll kind of keep tweaking until we think it's done. It'll probably never be done, but. <laughs> Something new will break every time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we looked at a lot of designs. Uh, online before we decided to go with this and most of them were something somebody built in their garage somewhere and the ones that were being used in uh, you know like industrial type situations they were ones built 1930s 1920s so they're all heavy duty things we're hoping this will last that long hopefully um, I mean as long as they're maintained it's basically just a big hammer with a motor on the back. Yeah we've gone through a lot of motors kind of trying to figure out which one was best. Thankfully we had a supply of old junk motors so probably half the time it was our fault, half the time the motor was bad to begin with but we finally settled on a three horsepower three phase motor so that seems to be working for us for the time being. Um, actually the spindle back here, the tire, the leaf spring on top is kind of scavenged uh, from the old motor pool we have out there. Took a cutting torch to those guys. Uh, scavenge support from that. Um, kind of in tradition with the hammers like these, it was all from scavenge pieces, parts, junk metal. So, from the materials we put together, um, just kind of you know bring them over piece by piece, and then just the weights of everything. Probably seven to eight hundred pounds. Um, actually, the two columns here are filled with sand to kind of deaden the blows, so that adds a lot of weight to it. Currently, we're still working on getting techniques down to get the forge welds down. And eventually, we're going to try and make some small knives here and there, do the heat treating, because that's another part. From the heat treating, then we can actually do samples and look under a microscope and see the crystal formation that's happening, how the layers made a difference, and then also be able to compare it against pieces that aren't made from a forge, that are made from uh, just casting. Personally, myself, I've never actually built something this big, starting from nothing. I mean, you know, you can work on cars, but you already got something solid there to work on. You can work on other machinery. You can build off of that. But this, we literally started with nothing. We put all the pieces together. Pretty much nothing was off shelf except for the motor. And like I said, we scavenged a few parts from the vehicles out there. But everything else, I mean, this was completely um, fabricated from the ground up. So. Yeah. As doing most of the welding, I kind of like that part. I enjoyed making like all the moving pieces that would connect everything together so I could actually see it. Looking at his base, how he made it, was made it to where I could see how to make the moving pieces and connecting parts. Kind of hoping it can be used in the materials class because with the, with the forge welding you can make all kinds of newer materials that we don't really have access to or they're really expensive so now we can kind of make them in-house and plus kind of everyone taking any of the shop classes under the curriculum, you know, what the heck is that, so yep. that's kind of
kind of something I'm looking forward to. All I can do is hope they hate the warning label. Yeah, watch <laughs> your hands. Yeah, the warning label's right here. Hand Smasher 50,000.